Darius Himes is the international head of the photographs department at Christie's New York. Prior to Christie's, he was the director of Frankel Gallery, a San Francisco gallery specializing in art photography. In 2007, he co-founded Radius Books, a nonprofit publisher of books on photography and the visual arts. So tell me what about photography is so compelling to you. You've been in it since you were an undergraduate, now you're the international head of photographs at Christie's. Early on as a teenager I fell in love with both the history of the medium, but then also I came out of the era of everything was darkroom based. So this aspect of the magic of right. chemistry based right. photography is kind of undeniable if you've been in that. You did books, yeah. publishing a uh, nonprofit. Yeah. That's a very different way to work with photography. It's more about the ideas, it's more about the art, perhaps. When we launched Radius Books in 2007, it was as a boutique fine art book publishing company. Mm -hmm. And we were really interested in letting photographers and artists who had a very unique vision and had projects that were probably not very commercial, find a way to turn that into a book. So we set it right. up as a nonprofit. Let's shift then to Auction House, which is yeah. like a 180. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know you had a transition in a gallery <laughs> first, but the Auction House seems like a completely different context for photography. Working with a historical collection, mm -hmm. working as a nonprofit publisher with artists, mm -hmm. running a commercial gallery of photography, and then now at the Auction House. And in many ways, each thing has kind of piled on to the next chapter, and I'm right. now, my department is responsible for objects from the whole history of the medium. So having an understanding of how these objects are were made or or just that breadth of right. history is very, I love that. I think that's... Well, the more you know about them, the more you appreciate them, the more uh, you can sell them. And in many ways, I think of myself as an advisor. We do make decisions, and I definitely direct the team about works that I think that we should offer and then works mm -hmm. that I don't think sort of rise to the level of what we should be offering. Right. So there's a bit of a... I don't want to pretend I'm a curator, but there is a bit of a um, restriction in that sense. And also, I just don't want to sell bad art. I yeah. mean, there's also just that aspect of... Well, like, for the long term of the business, too. Yeah. I mean, it's a, yeah. good, it's a good business plan, you know. Yeah. Well, buying is an emotional experience right. for many of us. For Va you Value know, is an emotional experience. Yeah, value is an emotional experience. Yeah. The estimate, we always say it's part science, part... You know, it's part research, but also part marketing tool. Right. All you need are two people and to go back and mm -hmm. forth, and there's no ceiling. So this is mm -hmm. the thing, it's like there's a floor when it comes to the price, but mm -hmm. no ceiling. And is there a profile of the person who bids high at auction? I mean, do you do you take psychology courses to... <laughs> <laughs> maybe, I sh maybe I should. No, I mean... The these thing are competitive <laughs> people, I think. These are competitive, but also I have to say, I mean, I've had the benefit of, of working with some collectors who have spent decades thinking about certain artists or one artist right. and building these collections. And, and they, they have know, holy grails, they, yeah, they're they looking have, for certain things. And they, they know far more about the artist than I do at this point. Right, right. And so that's fascinating. And they, if they have the means at their disposal, there are things that they, wa they want to build important collections that mm -hmm. may end up in public institutions. Right. And in a way, I want to help that. I mean, sure. you can always say... That's the best case scenario. I yeah. mean, that's the best kind of collector. And, yeah. But then there are other people who are just speculators. I mean, here we're in Hudson Yards. These, <laughs> all this huge development is going on. And uh, there will be people just depositing money in empty apartments over here once these buildings are finished. And people do that with art, too. You get the whole range. You have people who are studious and research and ask a lot of questions. Mm -hmm. You have some people who are just looking for an investment. And I think actually many masterworks of photography of the 19th and 20th century are still highly undervalued when mm -hmm. you think about their sure. influence in the world in relation to like a Picasso right. or a Marcel Duchamp and a Man Ray. I think it's morphed in a positive way. There's sure. more and more blue chip galleries have photographers on their rosters. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, I think it's great. How does like the larger <clears throat> stock market affect the auction house? Do you feel it? Do you know going into an auction that the Dow is up or down, confidence is low, or something's going on politically that's going to affect your sale? We are a platform, which means we're dependent on both the sellers and the buyers. Mm -hmm. And at these higher levels, when it comes to objects that are six figures, seven figures, and more, the people that have that money are very often tied to these indexes mm -hmm. in terms of their comfort. It's in that sense that we feel the pull. Either it's difficult to find quality consignments because people don't necessarily want to offer something that might not sell well right. in the current context. And it's a constellation of variables that
that can either go well or go wrong. There is a relationship between what happens at auction and what happens then in the gallery. And if yep. for some reason, you know, an art artist is taking off in auction, their works are selling at high prices, the gallery is then justified to raise the retail prices in the gallery and then the artist actually makes some money yeah, exactly. in future because of that. Because that, the auction is the public record of, of the artist's worth at any given moment. We're both from the Midwest, mm -hmm. you're from Iowa, I'm from Missouri. Um, but live here in New York and have for some time and in some ways I feel like I can understand rural America even though I definitely have a perspective as a New Yorker at this point. I mean what are your insights about understanding sort of the disaffected in this country? I went to a country school K through 12 and mm -hmm. there was no one from any other race at all. I mean, mm -hmm. it was all German-American immigrant background <laughs> Christian people. I feel lucky that I grew up in a household that was, we were, we were oddballs. I mean, I'm like, my name is Darius. I was named after a close family friend who's Iranian. So like already, you know, there's a story. <laughs> and, but we had people visiting from different parts of the world. And so I always knew there was something more, mm -hmm. but my classmates didn't. And that's and not to say that that's wrong, but it's just mm -hmm. having familiar is a huge yeah. part of, yeah. of, of combating these, these ideas and these stereotypes that are just false, mm -hmm. in yeah. my opinion. And there's a lot of work to do. And people are still uncomfortable talking about it. I feel like we also need at least a news channel that just shows us positive things happen. <laughs> Not to like gloss over the bad, but it's like there actually are cool things happening. That's a good idea, actually. <laughs> you know? I you mean, know, you, like... just need to find, you just need to find it and show it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's call it good news. The good news channel. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Okay. Good news America. <laughs>